Hi everyone, Esther here. Today, a really long time, uh, I'm thinking to make this video. And for the last two weeks, uh, for some reason, I received specifically quite a few messages mess messages from um, my clients, my friends, my students, who asked me to give a little bit uh, short video preview what to expect from the reading with me, right? Because, you know, each astrologist, they have their different approach. And if you're aware, I have a, a few uh, school of thoughts I'm using. My main, it's the foundation, it's Kabbalistic knowledge. And it's a Sefer Yetzirah book of uh, formation. And it's, what is the book of formation? It talks about creation and the seed level of everything, how the, how the stars created, what was the thought of creation, what is really creator put in mind while he was working to create the universe and stars and so on. Now, what's really important as well, you, all of you, you come from such a different backgrounds. Some of you uh, practice different spiritualities, uh, different school of thought. Some of them do not, some of you do not practice any spirituality, which is rare nowadays. And uh, it's still, you can find, uh, you can benefit greatly from reading with me and I can show you a couple of things, what for you to expect, okay? Now, let's say if uh, I have a student, a client who practice Kabbalistic knowledge, who practice Kabbalah, therefore, uh, automatically, uh, this person studies Zohar, Book of Zohar, because the Kabbalistic knowledge is based on Book of Zohar and uh, which is uh, attached to the Torah. And the Book of Zohar contain um, different sections in our soul choose to come to specific day, specific time is choose specific country and family specifically mother in order to complete their own tikkun process, the correction the other incarnation, whatever they didn't have a chance to complete plus the uh, ancestor lineage attached to the work as well so why I'm bringing up right now this additional information because if for example yourself you somehow already connect to the Kabbalistic knowledge you study and you study Zohar, then we're definitely going to touch up on why you born specific week and what portion of the Zohar connect to your birth moment. Why? Because each week we have a story which is explained of the secret of the final redemption. So for you, for example, if you're born specific week, which is connect, let's say, it's connected to the week of a golden calf, for example. So there's a message for you, for your tikkun process, for your incarnation. There's a message for you to understand what exactly missing ingredients on top of obvious you came to understand and to overcome in order to add the benefit to collective consciousness. So again, if I repeat, if let's say you're born on golden calf, and uh, we need to understand the story of Golden Calf, what's really happened there. If you're born as a female, female, they finish the Tikkun process, the incarnation, if on the Golden Calf, because they didn't participate in building the uh, the illusion of the, you know, of the God, of the energy, and the idol worship. So this person will need to understand both sides, to understand what is really light of creator, what is really worship come from, what is really slavery, how the slavery attached. And each portion have tremendous depth in understanding. You can spend your lifetime to study your own portion, and every time you're going to discover and see unbelievable wonders. Plus, it's tremendous protection to connect to the Zohar. Let's say you're absolutely not familiar with what I'm talking about. You're not familiar with the Zohar, with Kabbalistic knowledge. That's fine as well. I would say 30% of my clients do not have this knowledge. Even after reading, they little bit have more desire and they understand why. And I always recommend to have at least one basic uh, foundation course of Kabbalah 1 in order for you to have some terminology, some uh, some understanding what is really losing, uh, what is really causing effect, what is the loss of creation, because the Kabbalah do not represent Kabbalistic knowledge, do not represent religiosity. Uh, the any um, it says in the Sefer Yetzirah and as well in many books, especially in the Zohar, 
Mm, then Kabbalah was exist before the uh, earth was created, before the creation was with the thought of creation, because there's all these secrets. Therefore, I know there's a lot of even priests who come to study Kabbalah. But again, you know, I strongly believe that in the future there will be no religiosity, there will be only spirituality. This is why Kabbalah is such an important Kabbalistic knowledge, such an important tools, essence, no matter what you do, if you practice Christianity, if you practice Catholicism, if you practice Buddhism, you will be even better whatever you practice because you will understand the bigger picture to understand really the thought of creation. Now, what I'm going to do right now, I will give, I have a, li a little surprise for you. I will let my amazing teacher, Ralph Burke, uh, it's a video about three and a half minutes only. I want you to listen to Kabbalist, which is the, in such a simple way, he explained most magnificent the secret of creation and what was the thought of creation and how great we are and what is really free will. Let's, let's listen to the Rav. I'm just going to first begin by translating literally the, uh, this verse, which is in Psalms uh, 106. Who can speak of the uh, of the power of uh, the Almighty? And to be able to hear all of the praise. Okay? Tochazi. And the Zohar continues, come and see. Kadba kutsha berihu v'salik bereyuto kamei lemivrei alma. And when the Creator, like going back to the time of creation, when the Creator sought to create this world, have a mistakel boorayta. What did he do? He began to reflect upon the Torah. Obarale, and he created the entire world. And everything, not only the world as we know it, let's say the world in terms of space, but every participant, whether we're referring to planets, whether we're referring to people, animals, and whatever kingdom, he would first reflect in the Torah, and then he created them. This is what it means that he was a uh, craftsman. How was he a craftsman? At first he looked into the words of the Torah, and then he created the world. Now this, this is a, a rather very strange Zohar for several reasons. First of all, talking about the Creator. Did he need uh, the letters to reflect upon so as to permit him to create the world. I mean, if we're talking about the creator, creator means <laughs> he has this power to create the world and all of its uh, inhabitants. What does it mean that he reflected on the Torah, the Torah as we know it, the scroll? And by reflecting on the Torah was the method, it seems, by which he created everything that exists in the, in the world. All right? That's the one question we're raising on what was just uh, recited in the uh, Zohar. Now, another important aspect. He comes to man. And when he came to the creation of man, the Torah spoke. The Torah, the scroll, scroll in the ark, right? Spoke to the creator. As far as we're concerned, we, some people don't hear the scroll speak, although there are others maybe that feel that connection. However, here the Creator is having a conversation. At the time when he wanted to create the uh, man, he said before him, the Torah said to the Creator, and we have to understand what kind of a dialogue is this between the Creator and the Torah to the extent that the Torah said now to the Creator, If you're going to create man, 
or the and after then he's going to sin, and then you're going to judge him as he should be judged. Then all that you created would be to no avail. Because if someone murders, as it is stated in the Torah, then there would have to be retribution, and that person would have to pay the price. And he would be judged, and he would be sentenced to death. So what would be the purpose of creating man in this world that he should sin, and then you'd have to get rid of him? This was the... Um, the question that the Torah raised. So why create man if ultimately he will sin? And again here, what was the purpose of creation? If not as constantly stated, so that man can accomplish whatever purpose he came for in this world, and whether it's a uh, uh, based on the reincarnation principle that we uh, return because of a previous lifetime of sins, and so now we have to make our tikkun, our correction. So that's why the world has to exist, to permit man to achieve some objective. That's why the world was created. So why is, in fact, the Torah asking the Creator, why are you creating man if he's going to sin? On the contrary, this world was created for the purpose of free will to permit man to make a choice. This is the only way that he can achieve correction because if everyone had a fear for murder and everyone had a fear for stealing, in other words, if it was at one time uh, the period of judgment, there was once a state of affairs of this world where if someone stole, the hand fell off. If someone killed, he died immediately. Then who would steal and who would murder? So where was the free will? So obviously retribution couldn't come immediately. There would have to be a point where you can steal, think you get away with it. You can murder, think you get away with it. And therefore, a person would have to develop a buy within himself whether he should murder or he shouldn't murder. But it's not the fear of, well, what would happen if he murders? What would happen if he steals? There would be no free will. So obviously, that opportunity to steal and to do the Averot, the committing of sins, was a part and parcel of this creation. So why was the Torah addressing himself or herself to the Creator and saying, why are you creating man? Don't you know if man sins and then he's got to pay the price? And as if your creation, meaning man, was Lashav for no purpose. But that's not true. That was the purpose, to provide man with the opportunity of free will. So, okay, so, so now then, I hope you actually can listen a few times. I kind of wanted to give, uh, you know, to let Raf to help me out and for all of us to connect really to essence, to this seat of things. And it's just a small, you know, it's only three and a half minutes, but it's such a depth into it and such truth. You know, when you listen to Kabbalists, at least I can speak for myself, Number one, you connect to the essence, you connect to the truth. And this is what's really, really amazing and awesome. And each of us can, we can listen and hear one thing and we all can get a little bit different, depends on the level where we're at, okay? So over here, here I have a chart of uh, my one of my clients. I'm not going to reveal his name, it doesn't matter, but he agreed and I'm going to use his chart, okay? So I just, we, we just can look at it a little bit, like what for you to expect? I'm not going to go too much in depth. But I'm going to go just by points, you know, so we can see definitely what is really first house. First house, it's extremely important, right? First house, it's really our identity. It's the something, uh, it's uh, it's actually says in the ancient books, first house represents our ego. In Hebrew, it represents or makiv, surround light. And to say what, what it's mean, it's really, you know, is the charter ruler, right? Whatever. For example, in this case, we have a Leo, Leo rising. So it's me and the chart ruler, it's sun. Right away, we need to understand where sun at, right? And sun, extremely important. Sun, it's really represent, you know, it's a, the sun represents raw energy, father figure, 
our focus in life of active energy. And it's really, really important as well, always to see where the Mars, according to the sun, okay, because of the active energy as well. Now, what else we have there? Now, with regards to first house, what again, what is really first house? What amazing about the system I'm using, the Babylonian sidereal system, and my other teacher, which is my a Babylonian astrology teacher, Mesopotamian system, uh, Ruben Kolev, Kolev, he's really, he's the one who creates uh, this software program, which is really genius because this software program provides for us not just degree, and not just the name of the sign, we can connect to, to the royal stars. We can see, you know, because each sign is built of many different stars. So we're not talking about just the degree. We're talking about the energetical force of the stars. And if some of you have a royal star in certain house, the royal stars many times can take over the whole sign of the tremendous energy. Okay. So, and again, if you can see like here in the first house, we have a meridian horizon where it's coming from. We always need to see what other stars is touching. So it's not just your degree is the meridian, which is what it touch on the high meridian, low meridians, extremely important. There's so many details we can understand about your soul, about your, you know, there's nothing new I'm going to tell you. I'm only here to help you to refresh your energy and to refresh your memory of yourself, what you already knew once, and for you to help to connect to your essence, to your beautiful soul, you like you giant, you know, we walk in giants, we have a God, spark of God, DNA of God inside of us, we need to know how to use, it's a big responsibility, it's like you have a machinery, you need to understand the manual was given to, you, right, so it's really beautiful, and you know, the first house, it's our it's a really first part of our life, which is foundation as well. It's connected to the inner world we experience, the qualities, the in in here in what we inherit from our ancestor lineage. By the way, our family, very very important. Okay, in what you really came to overcome this life too. Now, what about moon? Moon extremely important. It's called in Hebrew or pnimi. It's our inside light. Who we really are. What we really think when nobody around us, what we, when we're really on our own. And, you know, don't forget, it's changed every 29 days. Every two and a half days, it's fluctuate in new, in new sign. So it's especially if you have a moon in cancer, you have moon in the water sign, you feel even more. And what moon represents? It represents mother figure, the nourishment, right? It's the emotions. It's comfort, privacy, what kind of insight, security, in insecurity, insight, focus, concerns, really on ancestral lineages on different level, right? Our sun represents as well ancestral lineage from the father's side, our moon ancestral lineage on the mother's side. Then we have a Mercury. And what is the Mercury? Mercury, it's the oily planet. It's the communication, consciousness, speech nervous system our skills to express ourselves and sometimes we don't know how to express ourselves we want to pass information and because of the mercury debilitated or his retrograde and plus he can be completely burned by sun so we're blaming something with trying to fix some stuff instead of to know how to use this mercury right and don't forget as per ancients is uh, is uh, the mercury really it's in a way rule of, of your chart on your mind level, right? Is the quickest planet on the solar system is the thinker, is the rational intelligence we have. It's our brain. It's a social, our social approach, nervous system, like I say, communication, our daily survivor, the way we receive information. This is how we're going to pursue the information, right? Very important. And if, for example, if you have Venus and Mars, in conjunction there, it can create very passion, but very reactive and say, it really depends on the degree, right? Very important. Then we have a Venus. Venus, we have like five different Venuses. We have a day Venus, night Venus. It's depending if it's male chart or female chart. Very, very important, right? Especially when it's a morning chart for women. Women 
be more independent. She's like a Fardita. Nobody can really tell, tell her what to do. This woman usually cannot marry for money or to be dependent on men. So therefore, she needs to find men who will appreciate women like that. And if it's evening start, uh, evening Venus, so those, this Venus knows how to suppress herself, but perhaps it's, I wouldn't call... Uh, you know, say, uh, suppress. She knows how to deal with male energy in more balanced way, but she can sacrifice herself more for the partner than, for example, morning Venus, right? And it rep represents feminine, fem feminism. No matter if female or female, we all have both energy. It's lack of restriction as well and lack of clarity because don't forget the Venus surrounded by folk in Hebrew it's called Noga. Venus, it's not necessarily the most positive chart according to Kabbalistic astrology, uh, Sefri Yatsira, because she came with lack of restriction. It's about love, passion, materialism. It's about employment, attraction, and this you need a lot of knowledge and understand how to use your Venus in order to not to create additional clipot, additional um, you know, tikkunim, additional correction on top of we already came to work with, right? So it's very important to understand your Venus. Then we have a Jupiter, and really important, of course, for degree and Jupiter represent male and female chart, not Mars. According to ancient, Mars has nothing to do for uh, represent male as a figure because Mars is uncontrollable energy, right? Mars, it's a uh, you know, it's a, it's a male partner energy for you as a communication. But Jupiter, much more important to understand what is the partner for female. And in general, Jupiter is the tzedek, is, a, is the planet of wealth, of fortune. It's, a, it's not much connecting to, pers to personality, so to say, because it's considered outer planet is the giant. So she's not directly can express your character, like, for example, Mars or like a Venus, but the Venus, but you know, it's actually represent expansion, idealism, luck, uh, luck, fortune, right? This kind of luck I'm talking about. Uh, seeing what is the possible, the optimism, the bigger picture over you, overview of our life, the wisdom, the fortune. You understand? So, and if you have, even when you have debilitated Jupiter, Jupiter always gives you support. This is what's amazing about Jupiter. But it's really important as well to know what kind of Jupiter you have, how to activate. Now, when the Mars, Mars extremely important planet, because Mars in the same time, on top of its malefic uh, passion, like a passion energy, it's uh, considered the planet of uh, war. It's the Ma'adim, the planet of judgment, but it's extremely planet for our active energy. It has his own orbit. Can you imagine how powerful Mars? It's very independent. It's confidence, personality. It's pursuing things. It's it's a Scorpion energy, right? Plus, it's uh, when it's in Scorpio, when it's in Aries, is the raw energy. Sometimes, energy without um, concealment, and is in same time, it's concealed without really clarity. Sometimes, okay. So, and it's remove obstacles. It's un, uh, unpredictable, depends on the on your chart. And as well, according to Mars, we can say a lot about possibility of any difficulties and potential illness you can have. And again, when, for example, it's day chart plus Mars invisible, it's more stable to stay in one union. But if, for example, in a position, if night chart, you have a night chart and Mars invisible, it's possible for you not to be really um, faithful to your partner or to any other situation in your life. If, for example, Mars square, a square Mars Venus can be another thing, it's going to be hard for you to stay faithful, but it not necessarily need to be happening. At least you need to know, then you will be pushed by cosmic energy and you need to know a way to put your energy in restriction and to put more focus, right? If, for example, Moon and Mars conjunct, uh, for man chart, he possible can attract the woman who not going to be faithful to him. And opposite, if, for example, Mars with uh, with Venus, your woman actually can be very passionate and, uh, you know, can really even help you with the business and uh, for you to grow even on different level depends on the house. Now, Saturn. Saturn, you know, guys, I always say it's one of my favorite planets because it took me years 
to appreciate. And without Saturn, we cannot work on our incarnation, our tikkun. He really represents our best interest. This is number one we need to understand. I can talk so much about Saturn because Saturn is one of the slowest you know, planets we have. And it's, uh, it's in Hebrew, it's called Shabtai. It represents Shabbat. It represents Saturday. It represents restriction, discipline, right? It's the last planet of the obvious solar system. And it's a constant, uh, you know, it's um, it's con construction, right? In order to create something, you need to construct something, right? So it's uh, without restriction, you cannot reveal light. This is what Saturn is about. It's hard work. It's about, it's our tax. It's accounting in a way. It's the cold weather. It's uh, no emotions, which is sometimes it's really important for us to try to be emotional in order to make a clear decision. It see things the way they are. It's giving us what is really truth. And not just what we say, what is really on our subconscious. Remember, in, in, order, in order to work with Saturn, it's need to learn to be on time, to say the truth. Whatever you, not just whatever your intention. Intention, it's everything, okay? So next we have Uranus. Uranus, you know, it's one of the outer planets. It's not directly represent the characteristic of the person, but it's provide if Uranus usually sit with any other uh, planets inside of your chart, you can see he's activating the energy, depends on, on, on degree. It's revolutionary cha changes. It's something then in new, it, the way you can see things, new way, technology, freedom, active nature inside of us is the contributor to uniqueness and the straight forth within us, which is sometimes it can sit, sit, cook. And when time of Uranus comes, you're going to feel like you become part of the masses, really part of the collective consciousness. Really, really important uh, to understand your Uranus in your chart, especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. Then we have Neptune. You know, your Neptune is the dreamer, is the spacey planet. Unpredictable, you know. It's a planet of musicians, arti artists, uh, planet of deception, denial, confusion. Uh, if, uh, we, if, for example, Neptune in water sign, plus they have Rahu beside or any other malefic, person easily can lie. And not because, many times, not because he intend, in, intend to lie, he just believe in his lies so much that he become like a living a storyteller. Sometimes he's telling you a story, uh, half of truth, half of his own imagination, okay? Now, Neptune represents music, television, radio waves, media which can mislead public as well, right? Depends. So, but again, if you know how to use Neptune, and uh, we're going to look at this chart right now, what's really Neptune in this particular chart, it's really magnificent, actually. And then we have a Pluto. You remember Pluto, it's important planet. It's a Pluto really represent, um, it comes from the place of Scorpio. It's the king of underworld. It's the king of uh, darkness. But by the way, a lot of people don't know in ancients used to same used to uh, use the same sign for Neptune and Pluto because the Pluto part of the Neptune environment, okay? But Pluto represents the darkness of the Neptune. If you think about the deception, the illusion, and sometimes lie, and if God forbid Pluto together with Moon. Uh, and by the way, we have a lot of a few leaders who really create a lot of mess in this world. They have actually Pluto inside of the moon. This is the it's 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 very important to know where your Pluto is because it's all or nothing. It's like a detective, like a Scorpio. It's a Scorpionic energy. It's learn. It's helping you to learn in depth. If you know how to use the Pluto, you can become very successful and rich. But always come from the place of light and not place of black magic. It's controlling, you know, it represents controlling energy. Uh, it's hate cheater. He's like right away. This is why he's like a scan everyone, right? Strong put on chart. This guy's suspicious from the moment they, they open the eyes. So it's really important to learn the light of creator, not about that. Light of creator to be open, simple, and light. And this is the way how to transform this energy. And Pluto, it's all about transformation because it represents eight house. It's very, very liberating. This is one of the reasons we came to this world. Then, of course, I always touch up on the Chiron. 
and Chiron it's really important and uh, I can explain to you as well because Chiron represents your wooden healer it's uh, helping us to understand your foundation of your childhood what really you, your soul pick up from the energy of Chiron and it symbolize, symbolize our experience of pain our emotional wounds and it's really important how Chiron uh, facing your moon and it's um, you know it's alienation it's um alienations you know like from world aliens right it's make us a little bit uh, wanderless and therefore connected to suffering sometimes therefore it's important to come back to the wounds we create in early age in our life to understand them to make peace with them to finish them to kind of to complete the process and to move on it's really really um, well, I work with so many of you guys and uh, you know how it's liberating to understand the essence of your childhood and to your ancestor lineage, to understand the many things is not who it's not yours. You took up on yourself job of your ancestor lineage, 26 generation of ancestor lineages, guys. It's a lot. If you look at yourself in the mirror, look at your face, your beautiful face, your eyes, your every cells of your body, it's your ancestral lineage, it's your grandparents, grand-grandparents did so much. They, they revealed so many things. They went through so many struggles in order for you to be now alive and go through your experience. And it's you are part of this whole big, big kingdom. You understand? And the, you know, and Chiron is the key to di to dis discovering your core, your healing power, because it's called a uh, wooden healer. So, you know, from, from good patient, it's become be best doctor because you become the best doctor yourself when you really study your own self, your body, right? Then we have uh, South, North, and North, North, extremely important. You remember what Raf discussed about our incarnation, about the Tikkun process? You know, we have a South Node, North Node, extremely important. You know, the South Node represent in um, in in Kabbalistic uh, astrology, in Sefer Yatira, it represents dragon tail. And, you know, which is Keto. What you are master in past life. What did you master in past life? All your positive past life education. All, you know, also knows is a, you will be... In, you know, instantly attract to certain things because this is your past. But because it is very familiar to you, it can drain you down. Is the isolation. This is life. You are detached from what you accomplished before. So South Node represent where we are coming from and what we are bringing into this life that includes lessons from our past lives, and thus, all the gifts and qualities, the talents you have already mastered, but it can drain you down because it's very familiar to you. And many times it's like dragging you, dragging us, right? You'll be instantly attracted. It's like a moon. She doesn't have her own light. So she attracts to the past. Moon, uh, moon people love history because history it's already been it's already existed secure you understand this is one of the reasons cancerians for example they love history they love silver they love antique stuff because this is something moon really connect to it this uh, it's already been done this there's nothing like a surprise there okay just for you to understand then we have a north node right we have a, a north node uh, dragon uh, head rahu you can understand the type of energies you came to balance, how to find your life purpose, our future growth potential. It's really important what house, what sign it is, right? And because it represents our current tikkun, our current lesson. And Rahu, it's malefic. He's like someone who always telling you in your left ear, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. You understand? So... It's really important to understand the energy you have in Rahu. So we're going to look at the chart right now. And then we have Midheaven. You know, Midheaven is extremely important. It's the, it's so to say what creator is expecting for us uh, to become our really, our mission in life. And usually it's always high in the sky. It, the career, what we want from it, the recognition, the public persona, our speaking abilities, well, by the way, our fortune, habits, passion, uh, contribution to the universe, the society. This is what really Midheaven represents, how you can combine 
your current career with your passion passion and if you really understand your midheaven and you really apply to your career guys you know this is the midheaven so you're going to have not just make a lot of money you're going to be happy it's going to be happy money you understand so for example here it's very powerful look at this it's it's within three degree with aldebaran and then it's not far from regal but it's a little bit further but this guy potentially can be very successful very rich and he just really need to understand how to really, really balance his other energies right so over here we have mars and leo you know, especially for male chart, you have Mars, sorry, my apology, rising in Leo, it's unbelievable. Because, you know, rising in Leo, it's one of the, you know, one of the most gracious, is the walking king. You understand, it's the walking king. And it's uh, it's not easy when, when uh, usually men, when have such a, such an important rising, and they don't, they're not really successful, not making the money they want, they can easily get depressed. Because Leo, if you know the Leo nature, Leo do not really work or hunt, right? It's actually lioness. She's the one who provides. So she's the one who's going to hunt. And Leo usually taking care of kids and he makes sure he, you know, he trained his voice to keep saying, Arr, you know, like everyone will be afraid from his image. His hair look beautiful. But when it comes really to daily life, sometimes, you know, Leo men... Uh, rising especially it's not easy they really really need to find themselves and look what we have here we have a 20 to 22 degree and what do we have in 22nd degree so it's setos now the setos in 20 it's uh you know a, this person can be a little bit greedy and in this way in the same time uh has a uh sexual desires uh but for the short term okay so it's really important to know that because now then you know you can possibly fail for certain things nothing wrong with that now you know how to restrict what tools to apply etc you understand guys then we have you see what else very interesting in this chart we have we have mars now the mars here in this chart you know mars for male chart very important it's uh, in uh, 21 degrees and it's almost in conjunction with saturn and it's in the second house so usually when mars you know in the second house it's a early family dynamic usually money restriction and this type of mars is going to really really sorry and uh, this type of saturn going to really really giving you lessons in life before you can really really earn to your you know your money and really to uh, to understand what is really sustenance represent okay and mars here mars in the second house it's a really beautiful because but this Mars, you see, it's retrograde Mars. So it's uh, it's you can have one day a lot of money and the other day you can lose a lot of money because the Mars retrograde. So this is why it's very important to, in this particular case, to donate, to put some money on the side, to restrict, okay? And because it's in Virgo, let me just look at the uh, my other harmonic uh, uh, sky chart because don't forget, every time when I look at the when I look at your chart, guys, I'm not just uh, looking, I'm looking at a lot of other details. I'm looking where the stars, what kind of stars is, uh, you know, touching your chart. What, if this is the royal star, how it's going to affect your whole chart. It's really important. Now, in this particular case, I don't want to make many announcements, not positive announcement, but this type of combination, this person needs to go a lot of ups and downs to really earn, you know, to earn stability. Because don't forget, Virgo represent. Uh, stability energy as well and it's represent structure it's represent day-to-day -day, uh you know uh living it's uh, it comes from the sixth house so it's not easy but it's uh, for this particular chart if this particular chart needs a lot of knowledge and restriction in order to activate all the other awesome blessings he came to to this world because if you look at the chart it's mainly chart it's night chart thank god we have a sun in upper level right but the sun a little bit challenging in, in the Pisces in the fourth degree. And this is a little bit challenging degree for ancestor lineage. But at the same time, this sun has a double edge. It has a uh, clipa because it's in the eighth house. You know, Pisces in the eighth house, it's the house of transformation. But in the same time, it's great sun. This sun can understand the deep, deep spirituality on like almost on an human level. You know, some of us came from the future. We already came with so much knowledge. 
with so much understanding. And suddenly, sometimes we receive this body challenges so much in this dimension. Sometimes we're trying to pick up the pieces. We're losing ourselves in order to find who we really are. This is the whole idea. Remember what Rav says, everything, the thought of creation, everything was created for us in order for us to earn it. You understand? And look what, what really made in this, the second part of this chart of life. It's actually showing his second meridian touching the river of life. Oh, oh my God, guys. And it's actually touching the point where the righteous soul is coming from. So beautiful. You understand? So much ego. And if, when this ego will be transformed, do you know the information, the knowledge, the wisdom this guy can reveal to, for the collective consciousness? And look at this Mercury, invisible, invisible Mercury. And it's in retrogression in seven house. He knows how to charm women, but not for the long relationships. And really, really beautiful. I have to tell you this Neptune with moon in the fifth house, in the house of creation, unbelievable. This guy actually really amazing singer, by the way, just for you showing showing you how this um, you know astrology do not lie. Astrology can tell you more about yourself than you you were can guess, but never. But it's really important to get this confirmation now because moon in uh, you know moon in Sagittarius it's not easy for moon to be in Sagittarius because Sagittarius it's you know it's very very quick thinker even though it still represent high knowledge it represent spirituality dasha re religiosity depends what you're connecting to I'm just telling you very short and natural but at the same time what do we have here we have a cat a past life so the past life this individual was Sagittarius and he was definitely knew how to perform and look at this amazing talent to write music to write songs to perform and this guy write music he sing and he performer but he came he's still doing what's really familiar to him you understand perhaps he needs to take himself his own spirituality to the next level because we have a cat here anyway, so it's it's so it's interesting chart, to, I have to tell you. Then we have a really, we have a, you know, we have every time when we have MC, what is really our mission, then we have to look at IC, what represent our childhood, our roots, our foundation. And look at this guy, his all understanding about his home where he came from, it's the Scorpionical energy. And it's not far from Antares from uh, you know from generals royals from fighters and my goodness gracious he has a uh, uranus with latitudes it's touching the heart of scorpio and it's and look at this over here we have a stink of scorpio he can bring music like uh on the level of chopin of mozart because you you don't understand guys to touch a stink of scorpio with neptune the revelation the depth but at the same time, this guy, uh, if he can get upset of some, he can be very creative. So it, you have to really understand how to use this energy. This is really double edge energy. Really, really can be so dangerous and so much blessing in one place. You understand, guys, the difference? Then look at this Uranus. Really, really powerful Uranus. In this Uranus actually touching the energy of Venus. And the Venus, we have Venus and Capricorn in 18 degrees. Oh, wow. so very powerful Venus very creative it's in the sixth house anyway I actually I need to mention something to him I'm not gonna right now to make too many announcement but so much creativity and you know the um, definitely high achievement and it's in 18 degrees it's a touch energy of angel he have a lot of divine inspiration if he knows how to you know, again, it's in the sixth house. It's uh, it's with a lot of restrictions coming here. And then we have a Pluto and we have a Jupiter with Pluto in the same house, in the third house, which is we have, you know, you and it's in Libra, by the way, which is uh, really amazing. The guy really can be unbelievable learner. He can really understand the structures of fairness and what is really fairness, what really universe wants from us, what's how to balance. He's not really like to fight with people. He rather to go and do things behind the scene. You see the Pluto here and the touch and speaker, very powerful. The guy has a knowledge of uh, definitely black magic and has a knowledge of, uh, of uh, a lot of knowledge, actually Kabbalistic knowledge and knowledge of... Um, 
mysticism. It's in touch and speaker as well. Really powerful. Really, really, he needs to really understand how to use his powerful energy because this chart it's considered the dark chart, the chart of night. So all these energies here, they really activated by night, by night. So he probably more productive at night than during the day. But in potential, he came to reveal a lot of light. And you see that his Rahu in Gemini. So this lifetime, he uh, he he probably he speak and sings and you know performing and he knows how to impress he can basically go to the on a stage i'm guessing and can speak without preparation and to impress people you understand so unbelievable and it's 25th uh, degree and we have a cyrus cyrus usually between 20 20 20 second so it's still very very powerful very powerful chart absolutely there's so many things, guys, I can tell you about the chart. I just kind of want to give you a preview what to expect. And again, for your own chart, I always give homework. I always give for you to understand what really coming, especially uh, lunar nodes, uh, they're extremely important. They change the position every 18 months. Right now, lunar nodes we have in Aries and in Libra. So you need to know where and what really expecting because next year it's transferring to Pisces and Virgo. And it's going to be completely new energy. Plus, we have a Saturn, which is he's, he's going through a very, very important period of time. Before he's going to be stationary, we still have a few months until October 23rd. It's extremely important time to do your chart, to be prepared. And as well, after that, Mars is going to change his position in January for next two and a half years. Uh, not Mars, sorry, Saturn. And Saturn, when he's changed his position of the stationary, We'll all receive a new, uh, new movie. You understand? Very, very important. Plus, don't forget we have a new, new things coming with Uranus, uh, Mars, and Rahu. Um, they change in their position right now. Something really didn't happen for over. I actually couple. I would say a couple centuries. It's like a really long time. It's actually coming end of the Ju uh, July. And one thing we need to understand: we're not longer who we are. Whatever we used to to the world, this world not exist. Some of us are still thinking and hoping things will come back. They're going to feel even more pain. But those of us who understand the way how we used to live, this is not longer relevant. It's not service anymore. It's not service in us. And most importantly, bigger picture, the humanity, because we all one soul. And there's no such a thing that I'm going to hire and you stay lower. It's up to you. By going higher and not helping others, by thinking you are higher than others, you're already putting yourself lower. Because we all want soul. Remember, if we you think you're working on yourself by not sharing your energy, by not sharing the information, your information eventually stuck like a still water. So it's all about to gain information and to share. To, to be tough with yourself and to love yourself. It's all about balance. You understand, guys? So anyway, thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope you will gain a little bit more understanding and uh, what, what to expect from astrological reading. You don't have to do astrological reading with me on your monatal chart, but I do recommend for you to do to find astrologer than you, char than you uh, trust, than you resonate with, and who can take you, help you, to help to take yourself to the next level, to reconnect with yourself. Because after we're going through such a tough times, it's so easy to lose ourselves without even initially to find who we really are and stop to listen to people uh, who telling you who you are. Many times, most of us, we don't know who we are. How can we tell somebody? We have to all mind our own business to work on ourselves. Of course, if you have messages and they're repeating themselves, every messenger, uh, it's a messenger. It's, you know, how they say, don't kill the messenger. It's really important to hear other people. But at the same time, not for the sake to, uh, to put yourself down, for the sake to get the message, to understand what is the message for, and to move on. Because creator, the light of creator uh, cannot send blessing to vessel which has been blocked. We are the one it, every time when we go extra mile, every time when we know how to switch our consciousness, almost like a like a click, and switch our mood, instead to continue go down, like, no, 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 one second. I understand my mind, it's not who I am. 
I can, my mind cannot tell me what to do. I have to be here in charge. This is the moment of revelation and moment of transformation. You know, when the hardest moment comes for you to restrict with extra bite, you say, no, I'm not going to eat because I'm actually full. Or I'm a little bit hungry, but it's amazing feeling to be a little bit light by living table. Same thing with energy, with other people. Don't give too much and don't leave them empty. You understand? Uh, tend to balance. Okay, guys. So, again, thank you so much for watching. And I'm looking forward for, to interact with you, to interact with you in the future. It's been a long day, so I had a couple of readings. So already I feel like I'm trying to finish my sentence. <laughs> And uh, always send you much love. And uh, I really, really, I even love you guys, those of you who I don't even know, because I have agenda, personal agenda, for you guys to transform, to change, then my children can live, your children can live in better world. We can give to collective consciousness much better ball, ball of energy. Okay, all the best. Bye-bye.